Culture of Artsakh, formerly known as Nagorno-Karabakh, includes artifacts of tangible and intangible culture that has been historically associated with Artsakh and Nagorno-Karabakh, a historical province in the southern Caucasus most of which is controlled by the Republic of Artsakh. These include monuments of religious and civil architecture, memorial and defense structures, and various forms of art. Nagorno-Karabakh and adjacent territories belonging to historical Artsakh, some of which fell under the Nagorno-Karabakh Republic's control in 1992-1994, has been called an open-sky treasure house of various forms of Armenian architecture. Overall, Nagorno-Karabakh hosts several thousand architectural artifacts and historical monuments in a larger sense. In addition to ecclesiastical structures, this number includes samples of civil architecture, ancient castles, and fortresses as well as numerous kachkars. The art and architecture created in Nagorno-Karabakh has progressed through the same major stages as did Armenian art in a larger sense. They began developing in the pre-Christian times, proceeded through the adoption of Christianity early in the 4th century, and entered the era of modernity after blossoming in the Middle Ages. The principal expression of art Zaka's art in the Middle Ages was through ecclesiastical architecture churches, cathedrals, chapels, and monasteries. Most other forms of art in that period, including illuminated manuscripts, kochkars, Armenian, unique to Armenia stone slabs with engraved crosses, and mural paintings were likewise tied to Artsakh's religious life and its primary institution, the Armenian Apostolic Church. Works of architecture in Nagorno-Karabakh are constructed according to similar principles and with the use of the same techniques as those in the rest of Armenia, Limestone is the principal building materials that form the nucleus for the walls. They are then covered with facing and or plated with volcanic tough rock slabs. In large buildings and cities or in monasteries the exterior facing can consist of carefully cut blocks of tough. The monasteries of Gansasar and Dadavank serve as the primary examples of that style. For more modest structures, such as parish churches and provinces, it was common to use less carefully cut stone a practice which creates a more rustic appearance. Names of monasteries in Nagorno-Karabakh, like in the rest of historical art sack in Armenia, customarily include the term bank, Armenian, which means monastery. Examples, Dadabank, Tikchavank, Kutnisavank, Katnabank, Katravank, Yaretsmankansvank, etc. Monasteries are often located in or near settlements that pair the name bank. The most notable cases include Dadavank Monastery, Ganzasar Monastery, and Spitak Kokbank Monastery. Names of castles and fortresses in Nagorno-Karabakh like in the rest of historical Artsakh in Armenia, customarily include the term bird, Armenian, which means fort. Examples, Drabird, Handabird, Maribird, Kokonabird, etc. The earliest monuments in Artsakh relate to the pre-Christian era when polytheism was the most widespread form of religion. The most curious art form from the time period is, perhaps, large anthropomorphic stone idols that are found in the eastern lowlands of the northern counties of Drabard, Armenian, and Kachin, Armenian. They date from the Iron Age. In the northeastern outskirts of the Nagorno-Karabakh Republic, and further to the east, so-called Samanakars, Armenian, meaning border stones, are found. They originally appeared during the reign of the Artisheshin, Artaxiad, royal dynasty in Armenia, 190 BC 53 AD, who used the stones, with inscriptions, to demarcate the kingdom's frontiers for travelers. In Artsakh, the tradition of marking borders with Samanikars endured throughout the Middle Ages. The largest of such medieval markers stands near the town of Matags, Armenian, in the Mardikar district. An inscription on the stone declares, here the province of Syunik ends. In the early Middle Ages, Artsakh and neighboring provinces of Yudik and Paytakarin, known together as the eastern prefectures of Armenia, Armenian, became a target of missionary activities of prominent religious leaders from Armenian mainland. The most distinguished of them were St. Gregory the Illuminator, Armenian, died circa 337 AD, who baptized Armenia into the first Christian state in 301 AD, and St. Mesrob Mashtots, Armenian, 361-440 AD the scholar who created the Armenian alphabet doubt a number of Christian monuments that are identified with that vital period of the Armenian history belong to the world's oldest places of Christian worship. Among them is the Amaras Monastery, Armenian, which, according to ancient authors, such as the forefather of Armenian history Movsis Goranatsi, approximate 410-490, was founded in the 4th century AD by St. Gregory himself. The oldest part of the monastery is the Martyrium of St. Gregory's, Armenian, St. Gregory's grandson and Bishop of Agvank, who was killed by the pagans, 
Around 338 AD, when teaching gospel in the land of the Maskets, present-day Republic of Dagestan, in Russia, the mausoleum of St. Gregory's is a vaulted burial chamber equipped with two lateral vestibules that serves as the crypt for a church dating from a later period. Amaras is an active monastery of the Armenian Apostolic Church. While traveling in Artsakh in the neighboring provinces of Syunik and Udik, in circa 410 AD, St. Mesrob Mashtots established a school at Amaras where the Armenian script, invented by him in 405 AD, was first introduced for teaching purposes. For 35 years until his death in 440, Mashtots recruited teams of monks to translate the religious, scientific, and literary masterpieces of the ancient world into this new alphabet. Much of their work was conducted in the monastery at Amaras. The description of St. Mesrob Mashtot's journey to Artsakh in the neighboring province of Udik is a focal point of several chapters of the history of Agvank, Armenian, written in the 7th century by one of Artsakh's most prominent natives, Armenian historian Moses Kagankat Batsi, Armenian, another temple whose history relates to the mission of St. Mesrob Mashtot's is the Targman Chats Monastery, Armenian, near Karhant, Armenian. Present day Dash Kassan in Azerbaijan, to the north of the Nagorno Karabakh Republic. The word Targman Chats, Armenian, meaning Saint Translators, designates both Saint Mesrob Mashtots and Saint Sahak Pardav, Armenian, head of the Armenian Church, 387 to 436 AD, who sponsored Mashtots scholarly and religious expeditions. Using Mashtots alphabet, Saint Sahak Pardav translated the Bible from Syriac into Armenian in 411 AD as testified by Mashtop's pupil Korean in his biographic work about his teacher. The main church of the monastery, reconstructed in 989, consists of one vaulted room, single nave, with an apse on the east flanked by two small rooms. The Basilica of St. Gavorg, St. George, at the Tsitsernavank Monastery, Armenian, in Kashatag, is not only an important religious site, but is the best preserved example of an Armenian basilica with three naves. It is a large and well-preserved structure dating probably from the 5th or 6th centuries. It stands not far from the so-called Lakin Corridor, a territory that connects Armenia with the Nagorno-Karabakh Republic. The word Tsitsernavank originates from the root Tsitsern, Armenian, meaning little finger in Old Armenian. This points to a period in the history of the monastery when it was believed to contain relics of St. George the Dragon Slayer. In the past, the monastery belonged to the Tate of Eparchy and is mentioned as a notable religious center by the 13th century historians Stefanos Orbelian, Armenian, and Bishop Tavma Vanindetsi, Armenian, in 1655. Beginning from 1992, the Tsitsernavank Monastery underwent renovation and became a venue of autumn festivals organized annually on St. George's Day. Tsitsernavank is an active monastery of the Armenian Apostolic Church. Churches with a cupola built on a radiating or cruciform floor plan were numerous in Armenia during the 7th century and are well represented in Artsakh. One example is the chapel at Vankasar, Armenian, where the cupola and its drum rest on the central square of a cruciform floor plan. The chapel is located on the eastern frontier of the Nagorno-Karabakh Republic and was reputedly founded by Artsakh as celebrated monarch Vashigan II the Pious, Armenian, of the early medieval Aranchan Hip dynasty, Armenian. Another example is the Octa Church at Mokrines, Armenian, the eight-door church, probably dating from the 5th to 7th centuries. Its walls, roughly cut and bonded, enclose a catarthoil interior with four small diagonal niches. Less common is the free cross plan with a cupola, found in the chapel of St. Savior, Armenian, in the Martikert district. Artsakh's designs at times differed from the course of the architectural evolution of mainland Armenia. Observations suggest that certain floor plans frequently employed in other regions of Armenia during the 7th century are not found in Artsakh. These include the chamber with a cupola supported by wall braces, e.g. the cathedral in Arij, in the Aragatsan province of Armenia, the cruciform plan with a cupola on four freestanding pillars, e.g. St. Gayana Church in the holy city of Ekmidzin, Armenia, and the radiating type with four rooms in a rectangle, e.g. St. Hripsimak Church in the holy city of Ekmidzin, Armenia. Another peculiarity of the region is that few of Artsakh's monuments date from the post-Arab period or the rise of Armenian kingdoms, 9th to the 11th centuries, which was a very productive artistic era in other Armenian provinces. The structures that could be attributed to that period are chapels on the cruciform plan with a cupola, such as the church at Varezgam, Armenian, near Kashatag, the Kurnisavank Monastery, Armenian, in Gedebaks, now Gedebay district of Azerbaijan, 
north to the Nagorno-Karabakh Republic, and churches with a single name, such as the church in Parisos, Armenian, dotted was during the post selju period and the beginning of the Mongol period, late 12th and 13th centuries, when Artsakh as architecture blossomed. Monasteries in this era served as active centers of art and scholarship. Most of them contained scriptoria where manuscripts were copied and illuminated. They also were fortified and often served as places of refuge for the population in times of trouble. Several monastic churches from this period adopted the model used most widely throughout Armenia a cathedral with a cupola in the inscribed cross plan with two or four angular chambers. Examples include the largest and most complex monasteries of Artsakh, Dadavank, Armenian, 1214 to 1237, Ganzasser, Armenian, 1216 to 1238, and Tichavank, Armenian. 1241 to 1246. In the case of the Ganzasser and Tichavank monasteries, the cone over the cupola is umbrella shaped, a picturesque design that was originally developed by the architects of Armenia's former capital city of Ani in the 10th century and subsequently spread to other provinces of the country, including Artsakh. Like all Armenian monasteries, those in Artsakh reveal great geometric rigor in the layout of buildings. In this regard, the 13th century's Dadavank, the largest monastic complex in Artsakh in all of eastern Armenia, located in the northwestern corner of the Mardikert district, is a remarkable case. Databank was sufficiently well preserved to leave no doubt that it was one of the most complete monasteries in the entire Caucasus. With its memorial cathedral of the Holy Virgin in the center, Databank has approximately 20 different structures, which are divided into four groups ecclesiastical, residential, defensive, and ancillary. Databank is an active monastery of the Armenian Apostolic Church. A conspicuous characteristic of Armenian monastic architecture of the 13th century is the gavit, also called Zamatun, Armenian. The gavits are special square halls usually attached to the western entrance of churches. They were very popular in large monastic complexes where they served as narthexes, assembly rooms, and lecture halls, as well as vestibules for receiving pilgrims. Some appear as simple vaulted galleries open to the south, e.g. in the Metzarank Monastery, Armenian, others have an asymmetrical vaulted room with pillars, Tichavank Monastery, or feature a quadrangular room with four central pillars supporting a pyramidal dome, the Dadavank Monastery. In another type of gavit, the vault is supported by a pair of crossed arches, in Horkavank, Armenian, and Briyetsa, Armenian, monasteries. The most famous gavit in Nagorno-Karabakh, though, is part of the Ganzasser Monastery. It was built in 1261 and is distinctive for its size and superior quality of workmanship. Its layout corresponds exactly to that of Habat, Armenian, and Shakabank, Armenian, two monasteries located in the northern part of Armenia. At the center of the ceiling, the cupola is illuminated by a central window which is adorned with the same stalactite ornaments as in Gidhard, Armenian, and Harachavank, Armenian, Monasteries in Armenia dating from the early 13th century. The Ganzasser Monastery was the spiritual center of Kachin, Armenian, the largest and most powerful principality in medieval Artsakh, by virtue of being home to the Catholic Asayat of Agvank. Also known as the Holy See of Ganzasser, Catholic Asayat of Agvank, Armenian, was one of the territorial subdivisions of the Armenian Apostolic Church. Ganzasser's Cathedral of St. Havanes Kirtich, Armenian, designating St. John the Baptist is one of the most well-known Armenian architectural monuments of all times. No surprise, Ganzasser is number one tourist attraction in the Nagorno-Karabakh Republic. In its decor there are elements which related to three other monuments. In Armenia, from the early 13th century, the colonnade on the drum resembles that of Harachavank, Armenian, built around 1201, and the Great Cross with a sculpture of crucifixion at the top of the facade is also found at Kecheris, Armenian, built around 1214 and Hovanabank, Armenian, 1216-1250. Ganzasser an active monastery of the Armenian Apostolic Church. Ganzasser and Dadavank are also well known for their bar-reliefs that embellish their domes and walls. After the Cathedral of St. Cross on the Lake Van, also known as Akhtamar, in Turkey, Ganzasser contains the largest amount of sculpted decor compared to other architectural ensembles of Armenia. The most famous of Ganzasser's sculptures are Adam and Eve, Jesus Christ, the lion, a symbol of the Bakhtangian princes, Armenian, who built both Ganzasser and Dadavank, and the church wardens, each holding on his hands a miniature copy of the cathedral. In Dadavank, the most important bar-relief depicts the patrons of the monastery, 
whose stone images closely resemble those carved on the walls of the Habat, Kecheris, and Harachabank monasteries in Armenia. Although in this period the focus in Artsakh shifted to more complex structures, churches with a single nave continued to be built in large numbers. One example is the monastery of St. Yegisha Rachel, Armenian, also known as the Jervshtik Monastery, which in Armenian means longing for water, in the historical county of Drabard, that has eight single naved chapels aligned from north to south. One of these chapels is a site of high importance for the Armenians, as it serves as a burial ground for Artsakh's 5th century monarch King Vashagan II the pious Aranchanik. Also known as Vashagan the Pious for his devotion to the Christian faith and support in building a large number of churches throughout the region, King Vashagan is an epic figure whose deeds are immortalized in many of Artsakh's legends and fairy tales. The most famous of those tells how Vashagan fell in love with a beautiful and clever Anahit, who then helped the young king defeat pagan invaders. After an interruption that lasted from the 14th to the 16th centuries, architecture flourished again. In the 17th century, many parish churches were built, and the monasteries, serving as bastions of spiritual, cultural, and scholarly life, were restored and enlarged. The most notable of those is the Yaritz Mankins Monastery, Monastery of Three Infants, Armenian, that was built around 1691 in the county of Drabard. The monastery was established by the feudal family of Melik Israelians, Armenian, lords of Drabard, with an apparent purpose to rival the Holy See of Ganzasar and its hereditary patrons, the Hassan Jalalians, lords of Kachin. Artsakh's architecture of the 19th century is distinguished by a merger of innovation and the tradition of grand national monuments of the past. One example is the Cathedral of the Holy Savior, also known as Gazan Chetsets, Armenian. 1868 to 1888, because it was erected in the historical Gazan Chutzitz, borough of Shushat. It stands in Shushat, former capital of Karabakhanate, and is among the largest Armenian churches ever erected. The cathedral's architectural forms were influenced by the designs of the ancient cathedral of St. Etmidzin, 4th to 9th centuries, center of the Armenian Apostolic Church located to the west of Armenia's capital of Yerevan. After the Karabakh War, the cathedral underwent restoration and currently serves as an active house of worship of the Armenian Apostolic Church. In addition to the Cathedral of the Holy Savior, Shusha hosted the Hermitage of Holy Virgins, Armenian, 1816, and three other Armenian churches, Holy Savior Megritsats, Armenian, 1838, Saint Havanes Kanachsam, Armenian, 1847, and Holy Savior Agulatsats, Armenian, 1882. In the 19th century, several Muslim monuments appear as well. They are linked to the emergence of the Karabakh Khanate, a short-lived Muslim rule principality in Karabakh, 1750s to 1805. In the city of Shushat, three 19th century mosques were built, which, together with two Russian Orthodox chapels, are the only non-Armenian architectural monuments found on the territories comprising the former Nagorno-Karabakh Autonomous Region in today's Nagorno-Karabakh Republic. From the 17th and 18th centuries, Several palaces of Armenian Meliks, Armenian, Duke, should be noted, especially the palace of the Melik Maglarian, Armenian, family in Jalistan, in the Shahonian district, palace of the Melik Avanian, Armenian, family in Tok, in the Hadrat district, palace of the Melik Natsakanian, Armenian, family in Gitashan, palace of the Melik Hykazian, Armenian, family in Kashatag, in the Kashatag Lakan district, palace of the Melik Dalakanian, Armenian, family in Tuknikal, near Stepanakert, and, finally, Palace of the Khan of Karabakh in the city of Shushap. Princely palaces from earlier epochs, while badly damaged by a time, are equally if not more impressive. Among those preserved is the Palace of the Dopian Princes, Lords of Tsar, near Agnabird, in the Martikert district, Dot Artsakh's medieval lands, called Ijevanatown, Armenian, comprise a separate category of civil structures. The best preserved example of those is found near the town of Hadrat. Before its destruction in 1920, the main repository of the region's civil architecture was Shushat. In the late 19th century, Shushat became one of the largest cities in Caucasus. In 1913, it hosted more than 42,000 people. Shush's architecture had its unique style and spirit. That special style synthesized designs used in building grand homes in Artsakh as rural areas, especially in the southern county of Dizak and elements of neoclassical European architecture. The quintessential example of Shusha's residential dwellings is the house of the Avanizans family, 19th century. Shusha's administrative buildings of note include Royal College, 
1875, at Parkiel College, 1838, Technical School, 1881, Summer and Winter Clubs of the City Hall, 1896 and 1901, the Zanharian Hospital, 1900, the Cantemirian Theater, 1891, the Holy Virgin Women's College, 1864, and Mariam Ducassian Nobility High School, 1894. Of these buildings, only Royal College and the Zamharian Hospital survived the Turco-Muslim attack on the city in 1920. The best preserved examples of art sec as rural civil architecture are found in historical settlements of Banans, Armenian, Gitashan, Armenian, Hadrut, Armenian, and Tok, Armenian. The first record of damage to historical monuments occurred during the early medieval period. During the Armenian-Persian War of 451 to 484 AD, the Amaras Monastery was wrecked by Persian conquerors who sought to bring pagan practices back to Armenia. Later, in 821, Armenia was overrun by Arabs, and Amaras was plundered. In the same century, however, the monastery was rebuilt under the patronage of Prince Yusai, Armenian, Lord of Dizak, who bravely fought against the invaders. In 1223, as testified by the bishop Stefanos Orvelian, died in 1304, the Mars was looted again, at this time, by the Mongols, who took with them St. Gregory's crozier in a large golden cross decorated with 36 precious stones. According to Orvelian, the wife of the Mongolian leader, Byzantine princess Despina, proposed to send the cross and the crozier to Constantinople. In 1387, the Mars and ten other monasteries of Artsakh were attacked by Tamerlane's hordes from Central Asia. According to a local Armenian legend, Tamerlane destroyed Amaris and ordered his soldiers to make up a miles-long line from the monastery all the way to the river Arax. Tamerlane's soldiers were passing on the stones of the demolished buildings from one person to another and throwing them into the water to form a bridge. But as soon as the conquerors left the region, the legend says, the region's inhabitants rushed to the river, brought the stones back and rebuilt the monastery to its original state. It must have been at the time when Amara's famous scriptorium was established. Shortly after the Armenian genocide and the end of the Caucasus campaign in 1918, a pogrom instigated by the Muslim Azerbaijani population in 1920 resulted in the destruction of the entire Armenian quarter of the city, which had a devastating effect on city's architecture, heritage, and position as a major trade city and producer of silk in the 19th century. After the entry of Turco Islamic nomads to Karabas Highlands in the 1750s, the city became divided into two parts, Armenian and Muslim. Although the Islamic Turkic tribesmen, known since the 1930s as Azerbaijanis, constituted a small percentage of the population of Artsakh as highlands, their largest concentration was in Shushat, where they lived in peace with the Armenian population there. However, during the early 20th century the city's cosmopolitan and tolerant attitude began to fall apart and became a venue of sporadic intercommunal violence but it was in March 1920 when it received the deadliest blow of all. Aided by expeditionary Ottoman forces, armed Turco-Tartar, Azerbaijani, bands burned and destroyed the Armenian section of the city, murdering most of its Armenian residents in the process, some 20,000 people in total. The city's three out of five Armenian churches were totally destroyed by the Turkic bands, Holy Savior Megretsats, Armenian, built in 1838, Holy Savior Aguletsats, Armenian, built in 1882, and Hermitage of Holy Virgins, Armenian. Built in 1816. The Cathedral of the Holy Savior, 1868-1888, was desecrated and severely damaged. With as many as 7,000 buildings demolished, Shusha has never been restored to its former grandeur. Instead, it shrank, becoming a small town populated by Azerbaijanis, 14,000 residents in 1987 versus 42,000 in 1913. It stood in ruins from 1920 up to the mid-1960s, when the ruins of the city's Armenian half were bulldozed by orders from Baku and cheaply built apartment complexes were built on top of them. The Karabakh War, 1991-1994, likewise left its deep scars on the architectural face of Nagorno-Karabakh. The Azerbaijani army intentionally targeted Armenian Christian monuments for the purpose of their demolition, using, among a variety of means, heavy artillery and military airplanes. Both Amaras and Ganzassar monasteries suffered in the process. Robert Bevan writes, The Azeri campaign against the Armenian enclave of Nagorno-Karabakh which began in 1988 was accompanied by cultural cleansing that destroyed the Agizer monastery and 21 other churches. Two out of the three mosques in the city of Shusha also suffered during the war when Armenian forces captured the town in 1992. 
the authorities of the Nagorno-Karabakh Republic, however, are restoring at least one of the mosques, reportedly with some help from Iranian architects. The fortresses of the region, called Bird and Armenian, were usually built on hard-to-reach rocks or on the tips of mountains using the rugged and heavily forested terrain of the region. Some of the fortresses in Nagorno-Karabakh include Drabard, Armenian, Handabard, Armenian, Kachagakabard, Armenian, Shakakar, Armenian, Jalistan, Armenian, Maraburd, Armenian, Togabird, Armenian, Aknabird, Armenian, and Ajkabird, Armenian. These castles belong to Artsakh as aristocratic families, safeguarding their domains against foreign invaders that came from the eastern steppes. The forts were established very early in the history of the region and each successive generation of their custodians contributed to their improvement. When the principality of Kachin forged ties with the Kingdom of Cilicia, 1080-1375, an independent Armenian state on the Mediterranean Sea that aided the Crusaders, a small number of Artsakh's fortifications acquired a certain Cilician look as a result. The Handover Castle, the traditional stronghold of the Vakhtangi and Dopian princes located in Karvakar, Armenian, Azerbaijan's former district of Kelbajar, was rebuilt with a grant received from Cilicia's King Levon I, for that it was also known as Levinabird, Armenian. Karabakh's most remarkable pieces of fortifications, though, are the citadel of Shusha and Askarin Fortress. Backed by an intricate system of camps, recruiting centers, watchtowers, and fortified beacons, both belong to the so-called Lesser Sinak, Armenian, which was one of Artsakh's two main historical military districts responsible for defending the southern counties of Varandai and Dizak. When the citadel of Shusha was founded by Panali Khanj Adventure, the founder of the Karabakh Khanate, its walls and other fortifications were built. Kochkars, Armenian, stone slab monuments decorated with a cross, represent a special chapter in the history of sculpture and are unique to historical Armenia. In the first stage of their evolution, this type of monuments already existed in Artsakh, as attested by one of the earliest dated samples found on the eastern shore of the Lake Sevan, at Metz Mazra, year 881 which at the time was part of the dominion of Artsakh as princes of Tsar. A very large number of Kochkars is also found on the territory of today's Nagorno-Karabakh Republic and adjacent regions. Several 13th-century examples look particularly refined, and a few of them deserve a special attention for their superior design. The two Kochkars of the Tichavank Monastery, Armenian, dating from about 1246, one of which is preserved at St. Ekmidzin in Armenia, show the two bishops who founded Tichavank. There are also the two tall Kajkar plaques placed inside the memorial bell tower at the Dadavank Monastery, 1283, which are veritable lace works in stone. Artsakh's most well known example of embedded Kajkars, where Kajkars standing next to each other forms some kind of hooded iconostas in stone, is the Bryetsa Monastery, Armenian, in the historical country of Varanda, Armenian, presently in the Mart Uni district of the Nagorno Karabakh Republic. The use of embedded Kajkars in Bryetsa is the same as in the Tsagatskar Monastery. Armenian, in Vaozdzor province of Armenia, and in the Haromos Monastery near Kars, Armenian, now in Turkey, dot a large catch car, brought from Artsakh as Metzaren's Hermitage, Armenian, to St. Ekmidzin, represents a rare type of the so-called wing crosses which resemble Celtic cross stones from Scotland and Ireland. The largest collection of standing Kachkars in Artsakh is in the area called Tsaranahatak, near the village of Badera. In most cases, facades and walls of Artsakh as churches and monasteries contain engraved texts in Armenian that often provide the precise date of construction, names of patrons and, sometimes, even name of the architect. The number of such texts exceeds several hundred. Covering the walls of churches and monasteries with ornamented texts in Armenian developed in Artsakh and in many other places in historical Armenia, into a unique form of decor. Compared with other Armenian lands, Artsakh contains a very large number of Armenian lapidary, inscribed in stone, texts per unit of territory, which date from the 5th century. The most notable and extensive of those cover entire walls of the Dadavank and Ganzasar monasteries. A prominent inscription, for instance, details the foundation of Dadavank's memorial cathedral. It covers a large area of the cathedral's southern facade. It begins with the following section By the grace of God Almighty and His only begotten Son Jesus Christ, and by the grace of the Most Holy Spirit, I, Arzahaddon, humble servant of the Christ, the daughter of the greatest prince of princes Kurt and the spouse of the crown prince Bakhtan, lord of Hadark and the whole of Upper Kachin, with that most hope have built this holy cathedral in the place of the last rest of my husband and my two sons. 
my elder son Hassan martyred for his Christian faith in the war against the Turks, and in three months my younger son Gregor died of natural causes and passed to the Christ, leaving his mother in inconsolable mourning. While my sons were alive, they vowed to build a church to the glory of God, and I undertook the construction of this expiatory temple with utmost hope and diligence, for the salvation of their souls, and mine, and all of my nephews. Thus I plead, while worshipping before the holy altar, remember my prayers inscribed on this church. Completed in the year modern 1214 of the Armenian calendar. Another historic text inscribed in Armenian is found on the tombstone of St. Gregorius, Bishop of Artsakh, at the Amaras Monastery. St. Gregorius was St. Gregory the Enlightener's grandson who martyred preaching gospel in the Northern Caucasus. The tomb of St. Gregorius, Catholicos of Agvank, grandson of St. Gregory, born in 322 AD, anointed in the year 340 AD, martyred in the year 348 AD in Derbend, by King St. San of the Maskets, his holy remains were brought to Amars by his pupils, deacons from Artsakh. Few of Artsakh's frescoes were preserved, but those which survived are important for the history of Armenian fresco art because of their unique compositional features and color schemes. The largest collection of Artsakh's frescoes are found inside the Memorial Cathedral, 1214, at the Dadavank Monastery. The Memorial Cathedral was built by the orders of Queen Arzu of Hadanark. The paintings depict St. Mary, Jesus Christ, and St. Nicholas, with a group of angels and worshippers. The fresco on the southern wall shows the Holy Virgin in a long robe with a red kerchief tied around her head. She is holding an oration adorned with crosses. Another fresco portrays the Christ, as he is giving the gospel to St. Nicholas. The fresco on the northern wall represents the birth of Jesus, St. Joseph stands at St. Mary's bedside, and the three magicians kneel in adoration in front, Cherubs fly in the sky above them, singing glory in highest heaven. A native of Artsakh in the 13th century author Kiriko Skanzakatsi, Armenian, hints in his History of Armenia that Queen Arzu, Armenian, and her daughters were gifted with exceptional artistic talent, so it has been theorized that they could have been among those who helped paint the murals. Other than at Databank, some other frescoes are found in the main parish church of the town of Arajagzer in Mardikert district. More than 30 known medieval manuscripts originate in Artsakh, many of which are 13th and 14th century illuminated manuscripts created during the Principality of Kachin. These scripts were created in Ganja, Azerbaijan, as well as at Karabaz monasteries of Ganzasar, Karanashat, Armenian, Targmanchats, Holy Virgin of Tsar, Armenian, and Yaritz Mankans, Armenian. A group of illuminated works is specific to the regions of Artsakh and Udik. In their linear and unadorned style they resemble miniatures of the Syunic and Vasparakan schools. These compositions are simple and monumental, often with an iconography that is original and distinct from Byzantine models. Besides depicting biblical stories, several of Artsakh's manuscripts attempt to convey the images of the rulers of the region who often ordered the rewriting and illumination of the texts. Manuscript number 115 preserved at the Madanadaran Institute of Ancient Manuscripts in Yerevan. Armenia contains a miniature portrait of Prince Voktang Tangak, Armenian, Voktang the Precious, Lord of Hadark. During the 12th to 15th centuries, several dozens of well known scriptoria functioned in Artsakh and neighboring Munich. The best period of Artsakh's miniature painting may be divided into two main stages. The first one includes the second half of the 12th and the beginning of the 13th centuries. The second stage includes the second half of the 13th century to the beginning of the 14th century. Among the most interesting works of the first stage one can mention the Matan Outer in manuscript number 378, called The Gospel of Prince Vogtam Kachensi, produced in 1212, and the Matan Outer in manuscript number 4829, a gospel produced in 1224 and associated with the name of Princess Vanini Jagro. Carpets and rugs are a form of art which is central to the artistic identity of the region. It is known that in the 10th century dyed fabrics and rugs from Artsakh were highly valued in the Arab world. Two accounts by the historian Kiritko Skenzaketsi mention embroideries and altar curtains handmade by his contemporaries Arzu and Koresha, two princesses of the House of Upper Kachin, Hadark Slash, for the Dadavank Monastery. In the 19th century, local rugs and samples of natural silk production became part of international exhibitions and art fairs in Moscow, Philadelphia and Paris. The abundance of rugs produced in the modern period is rooted in the solid ancient tradition. Indeed, Recent research has begun to highlight the importance of the Armenian region of Artsakh and the history of a broader group of rugs classified as Caucasian. Woven works by Artsakh as Armenians come in several types. 
Rugs and an Eagle Bands, Armenian, slash Artsbeidorm, or Sunburst, Armenian, slash Arevagord, pattern, a subtype of Armenian rug featuring dragons, whose manufacturing center from the 18th century was Artsakis County of Trabard, have characteristically large radiating medallions. Other rugs come with ornaments resembling serpents, serpent bands, Armenian, slash Odzigorg, or clouds with octagonal medallions comprising four pairs of serpents in an S shape, and rugs with a series of octagonal, cross shaped or rhomboid medallions, often bordered by a red band. Artsakh is also the source of some of the oldest rugs bearing Armenian inscriptions the rug with three niches from the town of Banhans, 1602, the rug of Catholicos nurses of Agvank, 1731, and the famous Gohar. Gohar, rug, 1700. It should also be added that most rugs with Armenian inscriptions come from Artsakh. Armenia, 1,700 years of Christian architecture. Muthni Publishers, Yerevan, 2001. Tome Masters and Richard Plunkett. Georgia, Armenia and Azerbaijan, Lonely Planet Publications, 2 edition, July 2004. Nicholas Holding. Armenia with Nagorno-Karabakh, Brat Travel Guides, 2nd edition, October, 2006.